For humans, a sitemap is a simple file with URLs, but for spiders, not that kind of spider. I meant a search engine crawler, the sitemap can be like the treasure map for your site. So let's explore how sitemaps can help you and what kind of website needs one. First, an XML sitemap is a document containing a list of all the URLs that you want a search engine to regularly crawl. You can think of a sitemap as a virtual compass pointing search engines to important pages. This document helps search engines find pages and crawl them more efficiently. From a technical point of view, sitemaps have a few limitations, like having a maximum of 50,000 URLs or 50 megabytes, whichever is higher. These limits prevent servers from becoming overwhelmed. If you have a sitemap that hits these limits, you must create a sitemap index to list your different sitemaps. Basically, an XML sitemap index is a file containing a list of multiple sitemaps. The limitations are basically the same as a sitemap index cannot have more than 50,000 sitemaps and must be smaller than 50 megabytes. It's also possible to have multiple sitemap indexes. Now let's talk about the effects of sitemaps on SEO. The first and probably the most important thing about sitemaps and SEO is that sitemaps are not a ranking factor. Second, Having a sitemap does not guarantee the page will be indexed. Also, Google employees said that the links are still the primary discovery method, not sitemaps. And last, sitemaps helps Google to be more efficient at crawling. So, while XML sitemaps won't guarantee indexing or good rankings, there are some benefits to using them. If you're enjoying this video, consider subscribing. Our goal at SEO testing is to save you time so you spend less time pulling data into Excel and more time thinking about how to get more visitors from Google. Now back to the video. According to Google, some websites might need a sitemap more than others. So it's not a blank statement that everyone needs and must use them. It's more of a case that a sitemap does not carry downsides and it helps optimize a website for search. And when you optimize every single aspect possible of a website, it usually compounds and leads to better rankings on Google. But it's important to reinforce that a sitemap is not a replacement for a good internal link structure. Now, your sitemap must follow this structure to be valid. First, it must start with the XML header which informs the XML standard used. Then we have the URL set telling the sitemap standard used. The URL set must be used as a pair, one after the header and the other at the end of the document. Next, we have the URLs. This tag specifies the URL you want crawlers to use. That's why it's recommended to only use canonicals. And the last mandatory element of a sitemap is the loc, also known as location. This tag refers to the location of the URL. The optional elements on sitemaps are last mod, change freak, and priority. When it comes to a sitemap index, the mandatory elements are XML header, sitemap index, sitemap, and lock. The last mod is an optional element here. Also, it's important to mention that a sitemap index can only mention sitemaps on the same site, so it won't be valid for subdomains. Now let's see how to generate a sitemap. Creating an XML sitemap is easy as most CMSs and website builders create one automatically. But I'll show you two easy ways to create a sitemap in case you need it. The first is using a WordPress plugin. Most SEO plugins have this feature and I'll use RankMath in this example. You just need to install the plugin and then in the dashboard activate the sitemap feature. You can end the process here or go to the sitemap settings to customize things. The second option is using a sitemap generator. Here you also have several options like Screaming Frog or Surehook, but I'll use xmlsitemaps.com. You just need to enter your website URL and press start. The tool will crawl your website and show you the sitemap preview when it's done. Then you just need to download the file and upload it to your server. Submitting a sitemap on Google Search Console is straightforward. You just need to enter your Search Console account, click on sitemaps on the sidebar, paste your sitemap URL and press the submit button. Google Search Console accepts both sitemaps and sitemap indexes. Shifting gears, let's focus on the best practices for sitemaps. The first one is that crawlers will use the exact URL in the sitemap, so make sure you use the same protocol and domain for each URL. 
For example, don't use www and non-www versions. The second tip is to only use the canonical URL in the sitemap if a page has more than one version. For example, don't add URLs for product variations. Also, if your site has other language versions, you should use the hreflang attribute. We also recommend including the last mod attribute in the sitemap. Google will pay attention to this value if it's consistent and accurate, which means you only change the date when the page's content has been updated. Another recommendation is to use dynamic sitemaps, which update themselves when new content is published or updated. You should also reference the sitemap in the robots.txt file. This way you are telling the sitemap location to crawlers and they don't have to guess where to find it. If your website has lots of rich media, consider using sitemap extensions for video sitemaps, image sitemaps, etc. And these are the essential things you need to know about sitemaps. Now, if you want to make the most out of your Google Search Console data, use SEO testing to set up SEO tests and know what changes to your site increase traffic. We have a 14-day trial for you to test the tool. Sign up using the link in the description. Thanks for watching.